Hello you degenerates. I've got a banger today. Well at least I think it is. You might think it's just another boring Seiko that required zero effort to make. And I wouldn't disagree with you. This is one of Seiko's newly released field GMTs, with this one being the JDM only SBSC009. If you didn't know already, I am a Seiko fanboy, so this video is going to be nothing but my positively biased opinions. To be fair, I can say there's nothing over the top amazing about it, but it is objectively very useful to me, it puts a smile on my face, and surprisingly came with a reasonable price tag. At $410, based on what is generally socially acceptable in the watch market and considering hype and branding, I think this is a great deal. There are micro brands charging more for less, so it's a surprising change in pace to see the big guy offer the deals this time. Here are the dimensions which are pretty vanilla, nothing that stands out in one way or the other. I'd say it's a watch meant for medium to large wrist sizes. My wrist is 7.75 inches or 19.6 centimeters, and it wears well for me. Considering this is a budget-friendly GMT movement, you really can't do much better here. Here's some size comparisons. First with the SRPG27. Then with the Rolex Explorer. And the SKX. I don't want to dwell on the technical features too much, but I do want to say that the 4R34 movement is more than capable. I think it's one of the biggest movement releases for the watch community as a whole in the last few years. The elusive automatic GMT is now available to the masses, and that's just fine with me. Unfortunately, they're still using hardlex for the crystal. Of course, there's nothing wrong with that, but you and I both know that if given the option, we would choose Sapphire. If not, then you're a goddamn sociopath. Under the crystal, you can see that they opted for the same dial design as their older field watches. I've got no complaints here. The inner 24-hour markers are redundant to the 24-hour markers on the bezel, but I'm fine with it. I think it gives the watch a bit of quirky charm and also fills up the dead space in a way that isn't overwhelming. I'm not a fan of the GMT hand style, but that's just a personal preference. Overall, in person, the dial looks clean. The bezel is of course a copied style, but to that end it works well here. I'm a sucker for the silver tone brushed look and this is no exception. For inquiring minds, no it does not rotate. The bezel is simply there as a visual reference to track 24 hour time with the GMT hand. The crown is a push-pull crown. There's nothing inherently wrong about that, but some people prefer screw-down crowns because of the emotional sense of security they provide. But a push-pull crown isn't any less capable, and in fact is more ideal, as it takes away any risk of the operator damaging the threads or gasket seal. The case back is going to be the same style as every other Seiko sports model, with a screw-down open display case back, revealing an unimpressive looking movement. I will say that this one hits slightly different. I think it's something about the outer brush ring that looks more appealing than usual to me. This watch is rated for a water resistance of 100 meters, and has the legendary Lumabrite applied to everywhere that matters, making this an excellent companion for the men whose jobs require more than sitting in an office. Here's some more footage of the loom shot. I gotta tell you, Seiko does loom right. It absorbs light like a sponge and glows all night long. It's impressive because it only takes some moderate ambient lighting from inside to get that kind of performance. These watches come with a 5-link bracelet and I'm not a fan. I don't understand the thought process here. I'm not saying the bracelet is bad, it just looks out of place with an otherwise generic field watch. You'd think the obvious choice would be your standard 3-link bracelet. So anyways, that's what I decided to do. Fortunately, I already have the SRPG27 and the bracelet is compatible with these GMT versions. Personally, I think this looks way better. The finishing is outstanding. Not outstanding like Zaratsu polishing, but more like a robust tool in a machine shop. It's brushed everywhere with only the beveled edge on the bezel being mirror polished. This results in a satisfyingly professional and straightforward looking watch that resonates with my style. Overall, I freaking love this thing. 
Watches like this are what I like about watch collecting. It falls right in the sweet spot where quality, value, and fun all sit comfortably without overshadowing each other. And there's really nothing better than that. Do I recommend it? Hell yeah I do. Interpret that however you like. That's all for now. Stay classy. I sure as hell won't.